inventory back in Sacramento in the real estate market in national is re- inventory coming back. We all prayed for it. Well, I think it might be coming back. Okay, what's up, Sacramento? We're talking a little inventory. Um, Well, there's a few factors that are coming into play, but inventory is slowly coming back. And a lot of people are wondering right now, what does that mean to me? Should I be waiting? Should I be sitting on the sidelines waiting? Because truthfully, interest rates aren't going up as high as we expected them to do at this point in the year as well. They're kind of, as everyone knows, they're kind of going here and there. Now, there are a few contributing factors as far as a big push on inventory that we're seeing right now. Number one is July 4th. If everyone saw that beautiful weekend, July 4th, sunny Sacramento and everything, we're going to notice a certain thing is the fact that there weren't a huge amount of listings popping on the market. It was super slow, super duper slow. So what does that mean to us? Well, that kind of means that um, the weekend after most listing agents, myself included, we actually waited. We waited in a week to actually put our listings on the market. So what that does to you is for the most part, you're thinking to yourself, well, you know what? There's not that many listings on the market July 4th, but all of a sudden you see this big, huge surge in listings hitting the market. And in real estate, sometimes when you see a bunch of listings hitting the market, things kind of tend to trickle. In real estate right now, we're seeing right now that there are more listings popping on the market. Okay. I mean, I would say around a little bit before the fourth, we're running on 50% of our normal inventory. And now we are running probably a little bit more than that, maybe like 55, 60%. And it's really, really nice to see houses are sitting. There's even a lot of homes actually being put back on the market. A lot of things are falling out. Now, I actually had a talk with a friend of mine, Matt, the mortgage guy, you might know him. We had talked a little bit about why this is happening. And my basic concept to him was, well, I do think that there's still a little bit of the frenzy buyer out there. The person that is still thinking to themselves, like, I just got to get myself a house, a house, a house, a house. So imagine if you're someone like that and you go to somewhere like a Citrus Heights, you pick up a house for maybe like 560, maybe you went to 20 or $30,000 over appraised value. You're super happy. And then next weekend, you all of a sudden see some more things popping on the market that might be better might be lower, and you're seeing all of a sudden new things hit the market. In my opinion, I think that's what we're seeing. I think we're seeing a lot of people right now who are seeing things pop on the market, maybe even a lower price point, and now they're kind of thinking to themselves, did I just overpay for the house I just got in the contract for? So we're seeing a lot of that stuff hit the market. Now, I did want to talk a little bit about stuff that I've been seeing online as well. So let's go to the first thing. Now, granted, we are not in New York. But one of the biggest push that we've seen is the bigger markets like San Francisco, like LA, like New York. People were basically evacuating the cities to come to the smaller areas because as we saw for the most part, COVID was letting people work at home. People were taking that little bit of a time off thing, bringing their laptops on the go, and maybe even contemplating moving to other areas. This was a strong push. For example, Sacramento, our barrier buyers have never been stronger than they were during COVID. Now that has waned a little bit and we're seeing it now in the major cities like New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, where a lot of the people are staying put or they're putting a pin in it and revisiting it. They're thinking to themselves, is my employer allowing me to actually, well, is my employer going to allow me to work from home? Okay. We don't know. And now all of a sudden we're seeing that more employers are not really making a decision as to if they should, you know, basically let them work from home, not work from home. They're being a little wishy-washy. So I think that that's stalling out our barrier buyers as well. Now, another thing that I ran into is this bidding wars are in the decline. And we are definitely seeing that in Sacramento. Normally there's like 20, you know, 20 offers in on a house. It's good to go. Now we're seeing more like maybe five, six, seven offers in on a house. So bidding has slowly declined. Now, Granted, and take it with a grain of salt, if you have a house and land park that was super hot prior to COVID, chances are it's still going to be super hot, no matter what the market is. So understand at the same time that even though the market might be, you know, bidding wars might be not that crazy. And right now the frenzy buyer is slowly kind of going away. And now we have the vacation buyer who's saying, well, if something looks good, I'm going to take a look at it. But if not, I got Disneyland all planned out. So we're seeing some things happen in the market that are very, very interesting. 
bidding wars were one of the things that you saw in almost every area of the Sacramento market. El Dorado Hills as well. You got Roseville, Rockland. Bidding wars were absolutely insane. Overnight, all of a sudden, you'd have three or four offers. All of a sudden, it would get the, it would just everyone would go crazy and the price would go super, super high up. So bidding is slowly declining as well. Now, as far as the Bay Area, like I said before, the influence of the Bay Area has always been something that, well, it's been super strong as far as our market. New homes, now the new homes have actually surged like crazy, but for the most part, it's because of the Bay Area buyers. Bay Area buyers want new. They say to themselves, look, I sold my house for 1.5. I'm coming into Sacramento. I want a new home. I can get a new home for a million. That's what I want. So because the Bay Area buyers are slowly, I mean, they're still coming, but they're not as much as they were maybe about three months ago. We're also seeing a lot of that happen as well. So now what we're seeing on the other side of it is areas like Elk Grove, areas like downtown, other areas in Sacramento are creating affordable housing to kind of combat that as well. A lot of people have been asking me specifically, why isn't there more affordable housing in Sacramento? Well, I think a lot of builders are answering that call. You're going to see some local mom and pops answering the call as well. All right. So now what I wanted to do as well is to basically talk about some of the questions that have been popping in to the YouTube channel as well. So I added some of these questions. And if you guys have any questions regarding the real estate market, please feel free to ask. Um, let us go directly to the questions. Okay. Number one, how difficult is it to get fire insurance in Placerville and surrounding areas? We're thinking of moving to the area. What's the average cost associated? Now for that, I always tell people this, go to a broker directly with someone, notable, you know, re recognizable insurance company like farmers and ask them about a quote. Now, another thing too, that's huge about that as well is that you can bundle your car insurance with your fire insurance as well. And you could save about 20%. So for fire insurance, it all depends on what zones. Now in Placerville, are you going to be paying more than in other, maybe more urban areas? Absolutely. But it's always good to know which zone you're in. And also talking to a broker is going to give you the 411 on that 100%. So fire insurance is huge. El Dorado Hills, you're going to find some areas there that it can get pricey, almost about $500 a month. Ouch. I know, but you know, it is what it is. All right. What do you think about Lincoln area and the new construction? I love the Lincoln area. I love the new construction. I just went out there with a buddy of mine, Sam Golovi, and we actually talked a little bit about that new development that's happening in Taylor Morrison, what's called it's uh, Turkey Creek. And it's pretty, pretty awesome. In fact, it's so awesome that people actually from Sun City, who is basically just like across the street, are actually moving over to Turkey Creek. And we talked to actually two or three people who actually were doing that. They're selling their homes on the golf course in Turkey Creek and moving in to um into this new or selling their home in Sun River or Sun City and moving it directly over to, to the new Taylor Morrison development. It's pretty cool. They have restaurants, pools, all that kind of fun stuff. It's a 55 and over community where only one person in the household has to be over 55. Everyone has to be over 18. So it's a new kind of a form of these active communities that are really, really cool. I would definitely say check it out. The, the smallest floor plan goes around in the high fives and they have the Taylor Morrison quality, really, really amazing homes. So for anyone out there looking for Lincoln, maybe they have one of the family members that are moving in. They're over 55. Everyone's 18. I would say definitely check out that community. It is pretty cool. All right. Next question. I bought a home in Orangevale in December 2020. Love it. So glad we moved here. It's, it's an underrated area for sure. Orangevale, of course, is completely underrated. The area by Folsom is always one of those spots where people love to move into, um, you know, Orangevale. You can actually, there's parts of Orangevale where you actually can get into the Folsom schools. Orangevale is fantastic. In fact, I've moved a few people into Orangevale. One, I got someone in there. What was it about? a year ago and they got a four bedroom, two and a half be bedroom with a hot tub, beautiful yard. It's like on a, maybe a little bit more of a quarter of an acre. Um, and it was a house that was probably, I'd say close to maybe 2,700 square feet, but it was absolutely beautiful. And we got them in for 435 and it was a great house. It needed a little bit of updating, but not too much. So Orangevale is definitely one of those spots. I call it kind of the stepchildren in, um, in Sacramento. I'd say a lot of the areas like Folsom, Roseville, Elk Grove, uh, El Dorado Hills get a lot of attention, Rockland. But then you have areas that have always been those kind of standout kind of um, 
withered the test of time, the old money areas like the Ardens, you got the Fair Oaks, you got Orangevale, Citrus, and Carmichael. I mean, if anyone goes to Carmichael and drives down Palm, they're going to see some amazing houses. Orangevale's got their spots as well. Fair Oaks, if you can go up to Curro Downs, Hazel, Curro Downs, right in that area, or the Bluffs, you're going to see some amazing standout houses as well. So I do think those areas are not as targeted by the Bay Area buyers or people who are moving to the area because they just really haven't heard of them. So I would say giving areas like Fair Oaks, Orange Vale, Citrus Heights um, a chance is really good. And I do think that are, there are some amazing areas in those in those communities and certain communities are pretty rocking over there. Okay, next question. The market, market is topping, market's topping out. Um, gee, uh, Mark is Andy, chief economist at Moody's and Allen. Starting to show cracks. It feels like we've hit an apex and we're moving to the other side of it. I do think there's some validity in that. I do think right now that we are seeing that, and I always stated on this channel, eventually something's got to give in the market. The you know, house prices were kept going higher, hoeing higher, going higher. New homes were keep raising their prices. I mean, you know, these new home companies were raising it almost what maybe like. 20, 30 grand every release. So I do think that for the most part, something had to give. And I do think we're almost at the part where people are wondering if this is, you know, if this is worth it. And I think that's when the market gets a little dangerous. All right, next question. Love your content. Keep up the good work. I just sold my house for 50K more above lipsing price. The challenge is buying another house. Still very expensive and competitive. I'm going to be patient and wait till next year or at least six to eight months to buy a house. Okay. That's an interesting question. To be totally honest with you, um, I get that actually a lot as far as people are, that are saying to themselves, should they wait? And I mean, it's it's hard to to kind of like answer that question because for me, I thought interest rates would be something that would be almost like a driver for people to still jump into the market. But interest rates actually are relatively where they were a little while ago. They're, they're just not really moving or making that climb that we normally would think that they would have by this time of the year. So it's interesting. So if someone comes up to me and says, hey, look, um, should I buy now? Inventory is still a little low. Should I wait for inventory to pick up, which is clearly is, or should I, for the most part, buy now? This is the million dollar question. And I think you have to kind of still understand the market is still a seller's market, it is still pretty a hot market. If you see something out there that you like, um, I still think it's kind of worth it to kind of jump on it. Um, again, I also tell people too, the fact is Elk Grove, Sacramento, you know, majority of the places in the metro area are track. So if you do see a square uh, a floor plan that you like, take note of the square footage and just understand and be critical and specific on what you want, because you want to make sure that when you are ready to jump, you see something you like, you know exactly what it is. So I'd say for a lot of people too, I'd say that right now is still interest rates are low. If you can find a house, you know, you don't have to go all crazy over asking, waive the appraisal contingency. And I think, you know, I still think, I still think it's a good bet to jump into a pre-owned house. I'd say new homes right now. It's interesting because as we've all seen, they've kind of slowed down on their building as well. Something is in the air. I don't really know exactly what it is, but you know, the new home companies, it's, it's going to be interesting. All right. First question. We just asked for family four looking to buy best value. Okay. Family four. First of all, hit me with the square footage and bedrooms and bathrooms. And what are things I'm guessing because a family of four, you're looking for schools as well. Um, okay. So if you're looking, I would say, um, like I said, if you have young kids, Natomas is releasing a couple new elementary schools. It's going to have the medical center or the medical school over there as well. It's a good place to invest your money. I like that area a little bit more at this time for investment properties. The area that I like, if I'm thinking family of four, what things do you guys like? What's your lifestyle like? That's one of the things that is really important because Sacramento, you get everything. I mean, if you're telling me that you have a family of four and you want something that you like to walk, you like to go outside. I think Fair Oaks is a great, great area to buy in. I think there are these areas, these pocket of streets, all Hawaiian names like Waikiki, Oahu and everything right by the uh, Fair Oaks Public Library that are really, really cute. They do the block parties, they do everything. It's really, really nice. I think Citrus Heights has nice pockets of houses too that are affordable. I think in Rancho, Anatolia, I think it's a nice area. You're in Elk Grove Schools. Um, 
so if you're looking for like a first time home buyer house, I think those are good pockets. I think Carmichael, Carmichael's getting a little expensive. Orangevale, I think is a good bet as well, but it all depends on what you guys are looking for. It, um, schools, Orangevale on the cusp of Folsom, although it can be a little pricey at times, that'll get you into Folsom schools. Um, I would say also, like if you want to get those Elk Grove schools, I think Anatolia is a great bet, great bang for your buck and a nice place to live. That's just my two cents. Um, also, let me know exactly what you're looking for. What are the things your lifestyle is and everything? And I'll go deeper into that question. Okay. In your opinion, uh, why is new home builder slowed uh, building if lumber is cheaper? I think new home builders at this point are kind of, right now they're kind of, they're going to give the, the question, right now it's basically they're talking about labor. Labor is a big problem. Right now we have the materials, but labor is the big shortage. And I can understand that. I mean, the truth of the matter is like, imagine if you're a contractor that worked for a lot of these new home builders, right? Contractors are making a boatload of money right now because they're in short demand. The builders need builders to come in to build. They don't have them. So right now they're kind of putting the crutch on that whole thing on the build, on the, um, on the labor. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's if that's completely legit. Um, I think material prices are cheaper. I think they're going to be easy to come by. Um, I think, yeah, skilled workers are going to be hard to find, but I think that's always kind of been the problem. So right now, the biggest thing is supposedly still um, finding the materials and also finding the labor. But at the same time, here's the thing, and this is what I say straight up, and I tell everyone this, one of the biggest one of the biggest things I heard when I would walk plans into builders were the fact that the builders would say the reason why the houses are so expensive is because the material costs have skyrocketed. So I think there's got to be a little give in that because now the materials are going down. A lot of the houses haven't even started to be built. Sure, it might be delayed, but now the materials are cheaper and they're getting cheaper by the day. Wouldn't that make somewhat sense that something would balance out? So honestly, it's going to be interesting. And I do think the re the builders right now are kind of strategizing exactly how to do this. And they're working off their interest list like crazy. So if you guys out there are getting calls from Woodside, Lennar, Taylor, and all those people, and you're thinking to yourself, man, this is weird. They slow down their building. Hmm. I hadn't got a call for like months, but now I'm getting a call. I would say that's a little interesting. At least that's my two cents. Okay. Ian, how's it going, my friend? Okay. Finally got a plan three at Black Pines. Just got in June. First house. So we threw 5% down and got a 3% interest rate. Black Pines, you know, honestly, for Rockland, what'd you get that thing for? Plan three, I'm guessing maybe around five something or another, low fives, I'm guessing. But honestly, I've always said Black Pines community. And I know a lot of people view them as patio homes, but honestly, I love the Black Pine community in Rockland. I absolutely think it's an awesome community. I love the, just, I just love that Black Pine community. And I'm a big fan of Black Pine community or the, the that builder everywhere, but in Rockland, bang for your buck. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, you know, yeah, that part of Rockland is as good as like, you know, Whitney Ranch or Whitney Oaks or whatever. And I'm like, well, Whitney Ranch, Whitney Oaks, we're talking 800 to a million. I think to get into Rockland for 500 is insane. So I think you did fantastic and um, good job. I'm stoked for you. That's that's a great community. Do you think since there are more than a half houses left to sell in the community, there will be appreciation? Um, I think. I think honestly, I think if you got in early, you're going to probably see appreciation happen in your house for sure. Like, remember, this, uh, a lot of people are thinking to themselves like, just because all of a sudden, um, you know, there's not as demand, like there's still is demand. They've got these interest lists a mile long. So trust me when I say this, they will find buyers for the houses. I mean, they're working off interest lists of hundreds, some builders, even thousands of people. And so you're going to see that Black, kind, black, yeah, black Pines community fill up. I mean, it's not like all of a sudden overnight people are going to be like, yeah, you know what? We don't want a new home. I mean, the allure of getting a new home is super powerful. All these people have actually made time to go see the new homes and the new home builders. I mean, prior to COVID, a lot of my clients didn't even want to go see new homes. Didn't even like, eh, it wasn't even something that they would factor into. So I would say don't stress too much. I still think you're going to see some appreciation when you get your house. Um and honestly, I still think you are going to see the same price increases. So hang tight. I like Black Pines. I think you did good. All right. El Dorado Hills, a fire zone. Haven't heard of fires there lately. 
but that is a concern. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're surrounded by that many dry, that much dry grass up there, yeah, I'd say it's definitely a concern. No matter where you live, you have to understand the elements are around you. And if you guys were around in Sacramento on the 4th of July and you heard all those firecrackers, fireworks going off, and then every single corner had one of these big things where you can buy all these fireworks, at least for me, I mean, you know, hey, do what you want, all that stuff. But that does concern me a little bit. Um, so understand this. A lot of people, just because you're going to be buying maybe a million dollar house in El Dorado, million dollar house in Rockland or Folsom, you're still going to be plagued by certain things. Like, you know, if you have dry grass, fire insurance, fire does not care if you have a $300,000 house or a $5 million house. So just understand your surroundings are definitely just going to be there just because you don't, you know, you buy a million dollar house doesn't mean that you're not going to have that wildlife, you know, there as well. You know, like I, like I tell people, that's just part of it. So yeah, I would say that. I would also say though, before you do pull the trigger on the house, whether it's El Dorado, whether it's Placerville, Rockland or whatever, you talk to your local farmer's insurance, you find out what fire zone you're in, you find out exactly how much it's going to cost every single month for fire insurance and you get that locked down. Um, fire insurance is also something that can fluctuate a little bit too, but definitely find out what fire zone you're in and get a little bit of an idea about that. Because the truth is a lot of people who are going to jump into these houses, like in El Dorado Hills, Rockland, Folsom, Placerville, you know, that they're, you know, they're doing the upgrade. So when you upgrade to a house, you tend to be very, very much like you tend to tap out as far as how much you want to pay. So an additional $500 for, you know, fire insurance can really, really be brutal for a family who just purchased a million dollar house in El Dorado Hills. So just be very careful. Talk to your fire insurance professional before you pull the trigger. Know about everything that's happening too. Also flood insurance. If you're in Natomas or what are the possibilities in West Sacramento of that happening? You never know. All right. We're planning to buy a house. It is on the same hill as Stone Bluff, Richmond American, 2,400 square feet, two stories, four bedrooms, three baths. What is your opinion? Is the price too high? About right. Uh, okay, we're planning to buy the uh, buy the home is on the same hill as Stone Bluff or some American. What is the price point on that house? Oh, there we go. If I would just read, and I apologize for that, but no, it's in the nine hundreds. Oh, you know, I mean, you know, okay. Here's the thing about that area right there. You're close to price points that support it, right? Taylor is on the plateau, and a Taylor probably for a house like that, you're going to be be paying in the sevens. Then you got, let me think, um, you have Jam C, which is close by. You can't get in there for under like 1.1 with upgrades. New home company is close by. You know, I think, I think, you know, 2,400 square feet might be a little small price per square footage. But I would say that area is definitely going to, you know, you know, you're going to have some really expensive neighbors, which is always going to help your price point appreciation. So I think 900, I think you might be okay. You know, I think it's at the top probably in my opinion right now, but again, like I said, you never know. Folsom is one of the hotter markets. Everyone loves Folsom. Thank you, Johnny Cash. But so just, you know, have you done, okay. 900s. Have you done any upgrades yet or a lot premiums or is that 900 out the door or like, what are we talking to? Cause that also varies. Cause it's stone bluff. I have a couple, um, I have a bunch of clients that are moving in. They're single stories, but they got the view, they got a premium lot, and they're looking around 900 for houses that are probably about 2,500 square feet. And those are a little higher on the hill with views. So that's going to be your kind of comparison. So let me know a little bit more in details. All right. Where are your views on the Sutherland by uh, American Home? You toured it on YouTube. I like the Sutherland. I thought the Sutherland was a fantastic floor plan. I thought it was great. Um, kind, yeah, I, I like that floor plan. It was probably my favorite floor plan out of both Mesa and Ladera that I liked. Um, I thought it was really, really nice. And I think it's it's spacious. I think that, you know, it feels like about maybe 2,900 square feet, which I like. So I, I thought it was a great floor plan and I like it. Um, but getting back to what you said about the 900s, like I said, you, you're comparison is going to be against stone bluff and what they start selling for as well. So just be mindful. I think stone bluff, like I said, my buddy Toby over there and Aaron, they're talking that for all the bells and whistles, premium lot, single story of 2,500 at this point, they're thinking in the you know low nine. So that's what you're competing against. So just so you know, that's kind of what they're looking at over there.
Okay, next question. I got lemonade insurance on four thousand on a four thousand uh, square foot home, Eldorado Hills, for seventy eight dollars a month. Well, honestly, I mean, if you can get it, that's fantastic. I mean, a lot of people, you know, if you're living maybe in Serrano or a more like dense area, like maybe Blackstone, you might probably be paying a little less. If you're in the area, kind of like by Guadalupe, Cortez Court right there, you might be paying a lot more. And remember this also, it does fluctuate. So just be very, keep that in mind as well, that you might be paying 78 this month, but it might go up. All right. Thanks again. I'd asked your team about this and they uh, were super helpful. So jazz to finally get in there. Appreciate you all. No problem. And like I said, guys, we're here for you. If you have questions, it's all good. You know, like even if you don't use our team, use us as a resource to help you guys get all the information you need before you, you know, you make a decision. I mean, even if what we're going to say to you is going to be basically the same thing you've heard from other places, at least, you know, at least you've, you know, kind of like gone through all your resources. So, you know, it's just a phone call. Truthfully, what you get here live is usually what you get on the phone. Unless of course, you know, the wife is mad at me, then mine might be a little more like this. But other than that, this is kind of what you get. So be prepared for this on the phone. Okay. Okay. Just because lumber prices are going down in the forward market doesn't mean the spot market has gone down. No, no, no. I totally with you. And like I said, this isn't like one of those things that I said, just because, you know, lumber is going down, it's going to be a big impact. It's always about supply and demand. And it's also though, one thing though, to take into account too, there's a lot of hoarders out there that hoarded a lot of like lumber, a lot of rebarb, Amazon. And it's going to be an interesting market going forward. Now, new homes have always been driven by supply and demand. So no matter what the materials prices are, the supply and demand is going to what, what's going to dictate the price. Now, the only reason why I, I even throw out the materials when I talk in new homes is because I, there's something about when I went to the new homes and they actually put the price point on the materials that it kind of set me off in a wrong direction. Like, you know, my thought would have been, hey, look, the prices on these houses are what they are because the demand is so great for the houses right now. End of quote. But by throwing in the material prices and how the material prices are impacting how much they're selling their houses for, it, in my opinion, it was a little misleading. So that's all I'm saying. All right. What are your views on Sutherland? Oh, we already got that one. Boom. Again, Sutherland loved it. Okay, north of Green Valley Road, now Dorado Hills is fire danger. Um, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. It's crazy. And um, I don't know, I started moving people into El Dorado Hills and it is just nuts because your farmer insurance is going to see the different zones. And one day I went over there and I, I met with a, a broker farmers and it's really like almost like one of those weather maps, you know, where the zones kind of change around a little bit. This zone is this, this zone is that. So your farmer's insurance agent, and I, I'm just saying farmers because that's the one I went to, to look at it. But at the same time, the farmer's insurance agent that I talked to showed me the map and it was it was crazy. It was like an energy map of all this stuff. And it was crazy. Some of it, you know, you could get like under 100, but some of it, you know, it, it was up there. And so just I would say this, it might not be super expensive, but I think as a person buying a house, person pinching the pennies, trying to get in the best possible house, a hundred dollar, a two hundred dollar, a three hundred dollar or a five hundred dollar extra expense every single month is something that definitely adds up. So I would say getting aware about it is probably the best way to go. Two cents. Okay. Yes, we got uh, uh, an interrupted view. 570 upgrades and love with the Sutherland. Your opinion is golden. Be honest. No, I mean, look, it sounds like you got uninterrupted views. I think, I th yeah, I mean, if you got those views and you got like, a nice lot and everything. I think, I think you're good. I think, like I said, you're competing with the um, stone bluff, which is all going to be the single stories. I mean, those views over there. Okay. I will tell you one thing. I've seen the views at JMC. I've seen the views at new home company. I've seen the views at Anthem United over there as well as Russell ranch. I do think the views you have with the Richmond American, like where you're probably your Southern Island is. And I do think where stone bluff is overlooking the preserve and all that stuff. I think in my opinion, those are the best views in all of Folsom, like as far as in that area that they're building. So when I saw that, I was blown away. And Sarah, feel free to call me. We can talk a little bit about this one-on-one. -on -one. And like I said, I know you're in contract, so it's not about that. It's just about giving you a little bit more information. Like I said, I'm sure you either worked with probably Aaron or Toby over there, real good guys. Got them on my cell phone. 
And so uh, if you need any, any advice on that, but I like the Sutherland, I thought it was a great model. Truthfully, like it was, it was really, really nice. All right. To the next. All right, Gabrielle, what is your thoughts on extreme price increases with Lennar Northlake and the Thomas? We just, we were put on the wait list and within four weeks, the price increased almost 200 K. I hate the price increases that they're doing right now. I think it's nuts. I do think, and this is just my own opinion about it is I do think they're trying to get in when the getting is good. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are blown away by North Lake because you know, the man-made lakes and all that stuff too. And in my opinion, and you know, like I say, I shoot for the hip on this podcast or on this uh, YouTube channel is the fact that like, I don't think they're true lakefront homes. That's just my own opinion. Maybe they'll build other ones that are on the lake, but I do think that if you're going to be paying for that high price point and you, you have a realtor that can really fight for you, I would say, go look at Laguna West. One is Elk Grove's a hot market over there. Laguna West is true houses that are right on the water. Beautiful community, soccer field, right? Bartholomew Park, right in the middle of the water, the man-made lakes. So I don't know. I mean, $200,000, that for me is in, that's crazy. I would say, don't get so caught up in the bidding wars. In my opinion, you know, you know, it, at, at this point in time, buying over maybe six, 650 in the Thomas, um, I think I'd probably sink my money in Elk Grove, even though it'd be insane to go in there. I think I would rather do that. Even though the medical center is there, I think that still that, that $200,000, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. I don't know if I, I could deal with that, to be totally honest with you. Okay. Lemonade gives an instant quote with no hassle if you're looking. Cool. And like I said, you know, uh, go over to Lemonade, see what you can do. Um, fire insurance is something that you just got to keep your eye out for. You know, it just is what it is. If you're buying in those areas, like I try, I try to tell all my clients, you got to remember this, like you got to factor in the Mellow Roos, HOA, you got to factor in fire insurance, flood insurance, all these extra little costs do add up. If you're barely making it into a house, I guarantee you an extra hundred dollars here and there is really going to, um, going to really affect you. So, okay. Next question. We bought a new 4,000 square foot GMC home. For 975k when you ranch expect moving date is september you can no longer move due to job restrictions <laughs> oh i feel for you what employers right now are doing is so i don't even know the word the terminology is so jerky i'm so sorry this happened to you you think we can flip it for more or back out of the contract uh, i'd say you could flip it Honestly, GMC, 975, 4,000 square feet. I definitely think you could flip that thing. Yeah, I don't even think it'd be a problem to flip it. Um, I would, yeah, I'd flip it. You'd probably make make some money off it at the at the least. Yeah, I, I think flipping it, definitely, you could do that. Um, the Whitney Ranch area. Okay, one thing about the Whitney Ranch area, if a lot of people don't know, is there's only a limited amount of building in Whitney Ranch. It's a private community. HOAs are, I think, 84, five bucks a month. Really, really nice beautiful community. I think JMC is one of the last communities that are actually building at Whitney Ranch. Once they finish up, the community is done. Brand new school put it in there as well. Um, a 4,000 square foot home in, um, in Whitney Ranch is a rare thing to find. T uh, Tim Lewis doesn't build that big over there. I don't think Richmond American builds that build big over there. I actually think JMC is the only builder that builds that much over there. I know a lot of people are going to say Toll Brothers, but honestly, Toll Brothers is not part of Whitney Ranch. I don't care what you say. It might be at the very end of it, but it's Whitney Oaks straight up. If you drive there, you're going to see exactly what I mean. But so in Whitney Ranch, 4,000 square foot, JMC, 975. Yeah, I think so, straight up. I mean, here's the thing. You got to remember this. JMC is building almost the exact same models at Folsom Ranch, right? Folsom and Ran Rockland, I'd say, are like neck and neck. And in the Folsom Ranch um, area for JMC, you can't get a house for probably under 1.1 million. And I don't even think you can get a 4,000 square foot house for that. So I would say, you know, worst case scenario, you're going to sell that thing and you're going to make some money straight up. Oh, and by the way, I can do that for you. Shameless plug. I know I just had to. Okay. I know you discuss upgrades to avoid uh, in new homes, which upgrades would you suggest and why is it a process for, because <laughs> they want you to buy. 
they suck you in. Have you ever seen those new home? <laughs> when you go in to see the models, you kind of have to go in the office, then out the office, and then tour the models. And then when you want to leave, you can't really go out. You have to go in the office and out the office. I mean, all that stuff is designed so you buy. You realize that, right? It's like that's that's the whole design. It's nothing bad. I mean, it's just selling one on one, but at the same time, it's designed that way. Uh, now, as far as upgrades to avoid, I'd say like backsplashes are, you know, number one. Um, I would rather do my own backsplash and do my own color stuff to make it stand out. I mean, the truth is, as much as we, you know, you're buying a, you know, semi track custom luxury, whatever home. I mean, there's still track. So for me, I'd like to have my house be as much custom as I could. And having a backsplash that I picked out myself, I think it's cheaper and you could have more, more, you know, different things. Lighting, I think that one's obvious. Lighting fixtures definitely go on your own on that one. Um, I would say probably the ones that I'd stick with is the wiring on the house. I would spend all my upgrade money on more square footage and a better lot size. Now, the reason why I say this is because in the future, many, many years to come, when you go to sell your house, if you notice on the MLS, the things that people list on the MLS right off the bat is corner lot. This is a square footage. We have a huge lot. Those are the reasons why those things are the things to invest in. So I would say if you're going to go that direction, try to do that. Because in the future, if you decide to sell your house and you have... Um, you know, you have like what super duper quartz countertops. People are going to see that and they're going to breeze right over that and wonder if you have a corner lot or what your square footage is, or if they can put a swimming pool in your backyard. And that's my two cents, but I think that's pretty much right on. All right, Thomas, under 600 K, do you have any, do I have any chance of getting a home four or five bedroom near citrus Antelope, or even North Highlands? Yeah, absolutely. 100% you do. Now you got to tell me how much square footage you want. Now, if you want maybe under 25, I think it's definitely doable. Um, you know, um, what kind of house do you want? Do you want turnkey? Do you mind doing some work into it as well? Like what are a little bit more? And if you want to, we can talk a little bit offline, but I, I don't see that. I think you're going to have a better shot in Antelope in North Highlands for sure. North Highlands for sure. Antelope, um, it'll go like you'll find more options in North Highlands then Antelope, and then Citrus Heights. And Citrus Heights is kind of a crapshoot where you go, so you got to make sure you are. But I think for 600, yeah, I think you could do that all day. Although if you're talking about maybe over 2,700 square feet, that might be pushing it. Um, but I think you'd be okay with that. All right, so to the next. All right. Thoughts on buyer's offers. Open doors offering me 725 on my house, which is 70K over Zillow offers. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing with open door. I mean, I think uh, as much as like I might be shooting realtors in the foot, I do think that there is value to, you know, I do think there's value to open door. I do think there's value to Redfin agents. And I know all my realtor friends are saying, oh, Mark, why would you do that? I do think though also, you know, listing agents, you should also put them in check. I don't think just a person listing your house is worth the entire commission. And I know right now people are pissed that I'm saying this, but I do think there should be some justification between like the money you're paying a realtor. Are they doing videos? How are they promoting it? Are they doing open houses? Are they staging it? Like, what are they doing? You know, like, what is that thing? How much money are they putting in marketing? Can I see the marketing that you're supposedly doing for me? Can I see what you're doing? Like a lot of those things, I think people bl blanketly just are like, Hey, well, Bob sells in this area. So Bob can sell my house and I'm going to sign the listing agreement. Let's do it. But I think, you know, listing agents should be kept in check for this stuff. I do think that, you know, the client is right about all this stuff. And, um, you know, now and again, we got to take it on the chin, but I do think that, that that's it. And I think for Zillow open door, I mean, be careful because a lot of times what I've heard about these, these companies is the fact that they'll give, give you 725, they'll go in for inspections. The next thing you know, you're selling your house for 650. So just be very, really careful. I still think that there is merit to some of that stuff. And I think at the end of the day, um, how can I say it? The realtor isn't, the realtor has got to work for his money. And, you know, if 725 is something that Zillow is worth to give you, 
and you talk to a couple of realtors and always interview more than one person as far as this kind of stuff goes, especially with like a Zillow, see what they can do. If they sit there and say to you, yeah, we can give you 725, analyze the fees because Zillow fees are really, really pricey as well and see what they can do for it. If you're a person who doesn't like open houses and all this kind of stuff, this might be the way to go. But it's like anything else, you know, like as much as people hate Zillow, you've got to do the Pepsi challenge to a bunch of these things and see what works the best for you and what puts the most money in your pocket. And that's my two cents on that. Realtors, you might hate me for that, but I, I got to say it. Okay. What you, what are your thoughts on Serrano versus uh, Summit in El Dorado Hills? I like Serrano. I think Serrano is just crazy. Summit's great too, but... Um, I don't know. Serrano's got my, I, I love Serrano. I love that area. Anytime I show that area to people, I think people are so over the moon with Serrano. Um, for me, a little far away, but I do think that for that lifestyle, it is. So I'm going to have to go for Serrano on that one. Okay. Mark, what's a good estimate for Lennar and their price increases per lot phase? 10,000. Um, yeah, I'd say 10 to 15, but you know, here's the thing. Lennar is a little bit different than most truthfully. Um, Lennar plays by their own playbook. So you're going to see at times that they're doing super increases on everything. They won't, they won't kind of say, Oh, that's what Taylor's doing. That's what KB is doing. Lennar does its own thing. I mean, Lennar does not look I mean, of course, they analyze statistics and everything too. But with Lennar, Lennar is a wild card with a lot of the stuff they do. They they were killing realtor co-ops very, very from the get-go. Um, you know, their communication, like I said, is horrible. So Lennar is its own entity. So just, you know, just be wary about it and just don't assume with them at all because I think that that can get you into trouble. All right, Johnny, we just purchased Lennar and Law Premium is about 10K. Yeah, it's about 10K, but also the truth of the matter is North Lake, $2,000, 200000 uh, Just be careful. And here's the thing. For people who've worked with me or know me, they'll realize that I'm always super cautious. I'm very, very pessimistic about everything when it comes to my clients. I worry more than my clients do. So for me, I get nervous. So I guess that's what I mean. Good info. Talk insurance agent before you buy. Agent told me uh, all of Grant Bay is risk now. Yeah, it is a risk. And, you know, like I said, when you buy something like in a Grant Bay house, like I've seen it, I've seen it with a lot of people. They're putting every single penny into it and they're like calculating everything out. And if you don't calculate a fire insurance payment, it really can hurt. I mean, the crazy thing about Grant Bay with all these beautiful houses too is the maintenance on these houses um you know some of these houses takes like seven eight hundred dollars a month for the landscaping and all that stuff to maintain it i mean there's a lot of maintenance that goes into those houses so i'd say make sure that you got your pennies when you're buying that, at that price point okay thanks christian i wanted to ask as well i meant um they do each phase release raise prices no, I don't think they'll release. Uh, no, I don't think they'll release ten thousand dollars each increase. I think they'll keep it the question. I don't think they'll say we're going to raise it ten thousand. I think that they might increase it a little bit. Um, but again, like I said, Lennar is a curveball right now. North Lake. If you are talking North Lake specifically, I would say just be careful. You know, North Lake is a super hot community, and Lennar is known to leverage that to get as much possible money out of a community as possible. So. I wouldn't just assume with Lennar because at the end of the day, if you assume it's only going to be $10,000 um, and they don't do it, there's really no one to cry to about it. Do you see what I mean? There's no one to complain to. There's no like referee or anything. It's just, it is the way it is. And if you don't want it, there's five people behind you that will get it. So just be careful with them. That's all I'm saying. All right. I'm in. Woo. All right. Gabriel, is it a good idea to purchase a condo for a single mother, one kid? Here's the thing about condos. And this is the thing that always kind of gets me. Okay. When you buy a condo, I would say rather, I, instead of a condo, I'd say buy a duplex or something because with condos, you got to have the HOA fees. And at times the insurance tends to be a little higher and everything too. So at times people will come to me looking for a condo and then we'll show them some you know, duplexes or whatnot. And they end up being able to get more, more of a house based on it. With condos, there's a lot of things that factors in, especially some of them don't take FHAs. So I would just say also understand how much the HOA is. If there's additional cost you might have to pay as well for the condo sometimes buying a small house or maybe a duplex makes more sense like i said if you're looking for a specific condo reach out to our team we
Wow. Okay. That's the Wi Fi. Okay. So, okay. Getting back to what I was saying, da, da, da. might have to. Roseville. Okay. Sorry, I lost connection. Around 2K square feet, three ish. We like Roseville, Folsom area, but probably too expensive for us. I'm a vet moving from Fort Bragg and SAC June 2022. Um, yeah, you know, I would say Antelope's a good spot. I think it's like, I think Roseville might work as well. Um, there are parts of Roseville where I think it could make sense. So, um, reach out to my team. We can talk to you a little bit about it, but I think Roseville definitely might be something to look at. And I think it might be your best bet with schools, price point and hot market. All right, Sarah, thank you so much, Mark. Not even a problem. All right. Johnny, I think they are not selling that many homes. I don't think it would be 10% increase on the releases. I hope not. But like I said, Lennar is a wild card. So just be very careful. All right. Thoughts on Roseville and Auburn. Love both markets. Um, I think Auburn, you have to deal with fire insurance. I think it's a little bit more out there. I think Roseville, you're closer to the Galleria Fountains. Auburn's, you're kind of in the mountains. It's beautiful though. Auburn's like a Hallmark channel. Mm it reminds me a little bit more of like uh like placerville ish you know you're gonna feel very remote auburn's nice it has some really really amazing houses like look at the ridge view area really cool views and all this kind of stuff roseville i think it's a little more flat you're gonna get closer to the galleria the fountains and all that kind of fun stuff so yeah there's definitely differences but i would say depending on what your style is i'd say for me roseville is a little bit more in there um, Auburn is a place that I'd probably live if I was, you know, I wanted a little bit more of that kind of hilltop Hallmark movie type of living. All right. Hey, Gary D. Marcison here. We have a client looking for what you have at GMC. Give us a call. Yeah, we always have people also looking to buy. So reach out to Kathleen. And I, you know, if you are, buy, if you are selling, like I said, it's, I, I don't think that that'll be a hard thing to, uh, to do. All right. Why don't you try Rancho Cordo? Yeah, Rancho is a great call. And there are areas in Rancho, all over Rancho that I like. Rancho is weird. Like you got Anatolia, you have Gold River, uh, you have Sun River, you have Gold Station. So there's a lot of areas around here as well. And the schools are, you know, depending what part of Rancho, the schools vary. So you just have to be very, very careful. But yeah, great suggestion. All right. Corlot is big but you might have a stop sign with squeaky brakes and engine revving plus <laughs> i know i know i know for everyone who likes a corner lot there's for everyone for every two people who likes a corner lot one person is kind of eh. some people like it i mean i think the ideal lot to get is maybe something across the street from a park just make it extra large the larger the lot the better good placement all that kind of fun stuff but i was just giving an example you know lot size is definitely important placement as far as where it is as well don't be like your you know, busy street, all that kind of stuff. All right, Adam. Hey, hey, how's it going? I missed the first half of the stream, unfortunately. What are some of the biggest new updates you've seen in the Sacramento housing market develop lately? Well, I've seen that the pre-owns are back with a fire. I mean, we've gotten, you know, new inventory hitting the market. Um, a lot of things are falling out. You know, things are going back on the market, which is something that was a rarity maybe two months ago. So I would say also keep your ears peeled, uh, your eyes peeled, your ears ready to go too. I would also say that you guys revisit some of the houses that you might have um, put offers in on and you never heard back. So stuff like that, I would say like, you know, just kind of be aware of that stuff. Um, the market is definitely changing. Interest rates are staying where they are, which is great. So I would say right now, just, just understand that the market is going to go through some interesting flux. We're going to see more inventory pop on the market. And I would say that we're going to probably see bye-bye to the frenzy buyer and the more astute person who's making the choice between finding something they really like or going to Disneyland and just starting school and staying put is what we're going to see in the market more than not. All right. Went to see a house in North Lake with 6,500 online. The door yeah. That is ridiculous. That's absolutely crazy. That that would for me, I would just like I said, I I think that price tag for Natomas. I'm gonna tell you something honestly. Go to Laguna West in Elk Grove. It might be harder to find a house there, and they might be a little older, but I would spend that there, not here. Okay, I've been tracking North Lake prices weekly on a spreadsheet, and the increase ratios from 10k to 25k. That's insane. I mean, it's it's nuts how they're leveraging the market so much. And I think it's going to come back and bite them sometimes. Yeah, it is. And I've heard the same thing from clients over and over that, that it's brutal. So just, just like I said, hang in there. It's it's probably not going to get that much better. But yeah, yeah, it's not it's not great. 
All right. Because of COVID and telework, do you think the Sacramento housing market has permanently changed and will stay expensive moving forward? No, I don't actually. I do think that a lot of people are rediscovering their cities that they live in, like San Francisco, New York. I mean, seriously, people were moving out of New York in droves. I get it. But New York is absolutely great. San Francisco is absolutely an amazing city too. So I do think there is still going to be a high percentage, maybe a higher percentage than before moving into Sacramento, because after all, getting a 3,000 square foot brand new home as compared to maybe a 1,200, 1,300 mid-century modern home in the Bay Area, I think it's definitely worth it. But I mean, San Francisco is still an amazing place. And a lot of these employers, I also think, are going to sit on the fence for too long. And people who wanted to move are going to start thinking to themselves, you know what? It's too much of a hassle. I don't want to deal with it. Another thing really to keep in mind is that during COVID, because everyone was working from home, they had a nice little laptop they could travel with. So they could go look at houses and all this kind of stuff. Now that a lot of companies have said you have to come back to work or at least be around I would say it's a little harder for people to come out here to look at houses. You have more of the weekend Bay Area look, uh, person looking. Instead of during COVID, I'd have a lot of people in the Bay Area come up maybe during Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Now I'm seeing more of those weekend Bay Area buyers. And so I definitely think um, that the market is going to chill a little bit, in my opinion, towards the end of this year. Um, the thing I think that I think the market would be a little bit more relaxed right now if it wasn't for interest rates staying so low. I think when we start seeing interest rates go up a little bit, I think it's going to it's gonna bring the market back to where it is. And I think a lot of realtors that I've talked to have said the same thing. They're seeing the market be a little bit more reasonable and that's kind of what we're heading towards right now. So I would say, stay tuned, pardon me, stay tuned. The last six months of the, or the last few months of this year are going to be crazy. And I think the beginning of next year is going to be nuts as well. I do think there's still a little bit unpredictable stuff happening in the market, but I'd still say stay tuned. It's going to be nuts. Okay. And AGH, HOA is exactly what are you paying for? Oh, El Dorado Hills, HOAs. No, some of them do. Some of them don't. I mean, some of them you pay for the facade. Serrano, sometimes you can, you can, you know, the gated communities, the security. I mean, Every like how El Dorado Hills works for the most part is Serrano for the most part, you always got an HOA and they're kind of different because some include the clubs, some don't, some are secure, some aren't, you know, so it's going to vary. Melrose are the same way in El Dorado Hills. If you buy outside of Serrano and you're not really in a community, you probably won't have to deal with HOAs or Melrose. So if you see those big monster houses on the hill, a lot of people went that direction because they didn't want to deal with it. Now, Blackstone, for example, in El Dorado Hills, which is really popular, you're going to have, I think it's like a hundred and something and you get access to the pool, workout facilities and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I think it all depends on where in El Dorado Hills you want to buy. Like I said, the area for the fire insurance that I was talking about is kind of out of control. Cortez Court in Guadalupe, that area, um, you're going to see no HOAs, no Melaroos. So I would say that's what you're looking at for El Dorado Hills, but I think it's Serrano, Melaroos, and HOA City. All right. Thanks for hope, Mark. Enjoy the show and appreciate the honesty. Not even a problem. Okay. GMC Folsom Ranch is selling three eighths and for 1.3 million, including a hundred thousand dollar front view. However, they're offering sizable builder credit. Um, if you're, if honestly, here's what I'm going to tell you: if you want Folsom that bad, I think it's 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 you know I think it's still you know you know it's still it's pricey. Don't get me wrong. But I would actually talk to our other friend who might be selling their house in uh, Whitney Ranch, and maybe you guys can barter a deal. Now, I, I don't know. I mean, I still do think 1.3, including 100. Uh, it's tough. You know, here's the thing about those houses. I mean, that's at the top. Other than maybe the new home company, you know, that's still at the top of that market. So just understand that, you know, you'll probably be getting, I mean, you, there'll be other houses in that JMC community. They're probably like 1.6, 1.7, my guess. But you're still paying at the top of that market. Do I think it'll be worth it? Well, you got to ask yourself, do you love the home? Is this going to be like a forever type home? I still think Folsom is super hot. So that's kind of one of those judgment calls for you. But I will say though, you are definitely buying at one of the premier top, top, top of the heap. And for me, myself, I never buy at the very top of the, I'm never, I don't want to have the, you know, one of the biggest houses, most expensive houses in the area, just for appreciation. It doesn't make sense to me. But those GMC homes, I've seen them. They're absolutely gorgeous. It's tough. Okay. When are you heading to Ranch? I will be heading to Rancho Marietta next week. 
and I've got my gimbal ready and flying out there, not flying, driving, but flying really fast. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Rancho Marietta plan on seeing that probably either late next week or the week after Adam, which location in Sacramento has more pre-owned homes listed and which areas have more new homes developing. Okay. The new homes are pretty easy. Okay. So you're going to have new homes developing, not really a lot of builders building right now, but you got Elk Grove, you got Natomas. They've kind of chilled out a little bit. Folsom Ranch is still on a rampage. Whitney Ranch is slowing down. Lincoln is building like crazy. Lincoln is just nuts with the amount of building they're doing. Um, I would say the areas that that there's really not a lot of areas they can develop are like Citrus, Fair Oaks, Carmichael. Um, I'd say Rancho and Anatolia, you're looking at some building, but other than that, Rancho, probably not so much. Um, North, North, North Natomas, Beezer was building out there and they slowed down over there. I don't even think they're really selling anything right now. And I don't think, I think Blue Mountain is probably selling, but only a limited amount. So I think if you're looking for places that have tons of builders and you want to go out there and get that Disneyland experience for adults, I would say, Whitney Ranch is probably sold out or pretty much getting there. I would say go over to maybe Rockland. There's a trifecta in Rockland of Richmond American, um, Black Pines, and um, TriPoint over there. They still have a lot of availabilities. I'd say in Roseville, you're looking at the Sol uh, Solar Solar area, and there's what's called Taylor's got a few lots left. You got Beezer. You have TriPoint as well over there. And Beezer just started building, so you can get in there early. Beezer's upgrades aren't really that much. I mean, their best model home is modeled at like the, the upgrades, and that is like 27 or 26K. So it's not like out of control. So um, I would say those are the areas. Um, I still think there's a lot of new home development happening. And just stay tuned. The market is, like I said, going to be nuts. New home builders expect it to be slower, 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 even though there's more materials. But just hang in there. Thanks for the plug, Mark. There you go. See, sold. We're making dreams happen. <laughs> All right. Rates are dropping lower again tonight. See, it's because of this this uh, this video show. They're dropping like crazy. Now, I know rates are crazy. And that's that's probably one of the things that's, that's, that's killing me as far as that. Uh, like I was telling my friend Matt, the mortgage guy, and we're talking about rates. And I was like, you know, um, I'm going to actually tell everyone right now online that rates are going to go up so that they'll actually go down. Because everyone that I knew was saying the rates at this time would be close to like a three, four or something. And they're not. They're going down. So I would say for those people who are looking to buy, I'd say it's still maybe a little tougher, a tough of a market. But I would also say that interest rates are super low. So if you can find that deal, I would, I would jump on it. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know how long rates are going to last this low. I mean, every lender that I talk to is just completely stumped about how rates are still low. So don't expect these rates to last that much longer. They might, but don't expect it. Um, I think that's one of the things that kind of kicked everyone in the butt when the rates were like, you know, 2.5, 2.4 a little while ago. Everyone kind of made that assumption that they were going to last that way. Never assume rates are going to last where they are. It just, it, it's something that just doesn't end up working right for you. I would say right now, if you guys find something that you love, jump on it. Like I said, I do think inventory at this point is getting better. I think you're going to find it that it's going to be a little bit easier to buy. I think the multiple, the you know, 20 offers on one house that day and age, at least in the low, slower markets, are you know we're going to see less of that. And I do think that hopefully by the end of this year, um, beginning of next year, the market should be a little bit more relaxed and it should be a little bit better of a buyer experience. Um, I hope so. I really do. Adam, no problema. Always here for you, and I'll be here next Wednesday. Oh, thanks, Heather. Okay, guys, until next time, I am out of here. Have an amazing evening. I'll be back here next Wednesday, 5.30. And if you guys want to flip on over to Aaron and, um, and Jen, they'll be going live on their channel. Just type in New Way Mortgage on YouTube and you can pop over there. Tell them Mark sent you. Give them a little love over there. They're starting a new show. They're really awesome people, and they're there to answer all your mortgage questions. Until next time, guys, I am out of here.